Kauai Studios for another episode of Security Matters. I'm your host, Andrew Lanning. I am sorry I am not live today, um, but you'll hear my voice and our guests are live today. Um, we've got Shannon Eady. She is the executive director of the Native Hawaiian Organization Association. And we've also got Alex Strong from McCarter in English. And we're going to walk today a little bit through, we're going to talk about a business summit they've got coming up. But I would like to like to sh discuss a little bit with everyone about how the supply chain that the Native Hawaiian organizations out here fulfill for federal government and DOD in Hawaii. So Shannon, Alex, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. All right. I'm sorry you can't see my face. I know it's hard to read the talking cues when you when you can't see someone's face. It makes it really difficult. So we'll go. We'll get through this. Um, I've got a really bad cold. If you saw me right now, you'd see Kleenex in my nose. You wouldn't be. It wouldn't be happy. So nobody would enjoy the episode. Um, Shannon, sorry, Sh Shannon. Let's um, let's start with the Native Hawaiian organization. So you got this summit coming up, but talk us a little bit through your history and you know what brought you into that organization and kind of what brought you up to here running this summit and the things you're doing with them today. Sure. So. My company, Holomo Consulting Group, is actually the executive director for NHOA. And my business partner, Daphne Tong Pave, and I actually worked for an NHO company. And that's kind of how we got introduced to the world of NHOs. Not many people know what NHOs are. Um, so let me just kind of give you a little bit of, of background. NHOs are nonprofit organizations that own the majority interest in for-profit companies, many of which are certified in the SBA's 8A program. And as uh, you and many others know, the 8A program is primarily helpful with respect to government contracting. So a lot of the NHOs are heavily involved in government contracting in many different industries from construction to logistics and some even do manufacturing so um, they're heavily involved in in government contracting as, as well as the supply chain awesome and these groups are do we anybody alex i don't know if you guys does anybody know offhand how much how many billions of dollars that that is a business in hawaii i know it's several billion i just don't remember the number I believe that government contracting as a whole um, is somewhere between um, two to three billion dollars spent here locally on an annual basis, and that's you know across all socioeconomic large businesses, small businesses. So I think that's you know the total dollar amount that's spent here annually, that's which is very you, and, the, and I can tell you that Native Hawaiian organizations uh, that. You know, while while they might be resident and give a lot of value to uh, to local Hawaii, um, they're they're international in scope. So there are Native Hawaiian organizations um, everywhere from Saudi Arabia to Germany to Korea, Japan, uh, and all over the United States. So it's a it's a rather large. Uh, they are, are a rather large portion of our um, our government contracting community. That's awesome. And Alex, let's, let's go ahead and get an intro from you, sir. Let's do a little bit of background just on how you got into it. Your firm does a lot of different outreach. I looked into, into different organizations like this. So maybe give us a, a feeling for what, um, you know, how you're interested in NHO or helping out in Hawaii. I know you've done some work out here before. I've seen you speak out here. So um, you know, take us through a little bit of your history as much as you care to share and uh, you know, what you're uh, hoping to get out of this event as, as, it, as it gets closer. You bet. So I'm I like to tell people I wasn't raised a lawyer. Uh, I'm actually a retired Air Force intelligence officer. Um, went awesome. to law school. Um, <laughs> um, went to law school while stationed at the Pentagon during the uh, uh, quiet time of 9/11 uh, and the years that after that. Um, so I've been uh, doing government contracting now uh, for um, roughly a little over a decade. Um, McCarter and English is a is a law firm that asked myself and Franklin Turner were the co-leaders of the government contracts and export controls group at McCarter English to uh, to come over and lead the group and really propel it and, and that's what we've tried to do uh, honestly uh, in large part uh, because of Shannon's help um, uh, just from a, awesome. from a random phone um, so yeah we 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 owe, we owe Shannon quite a bit um, so 
uh, that was really our first foray um, into into dealing and working with NHOAs. And since that time, we have um, really developed uh, quite a quite a bit of understanding uh, with NHOAs and quite a bit of rapport with NHOAs. We've been out. Um, I think this uh, is going to be our third time coming out to the NHOA conference. Um, we have spoken um, to Hawaiian contractors locally outside of the NHOA uh, on matters related to government contracts and cybersecurity. Uh, we've spoken to um, clients all over the island, uh, the university as well. So Hawaii, <clears throat> Hawaii really is a uh, a large part of um, of our business strategy, just you know, candidly. Um, but also, we recognize one of the best things about working with Shannon and working with the NHOs uh, generally is you know uh, there really is a sense of community because not only are you trying to do work and doing work for the government and and trying to make that bottom line and doing it the right way. But then you have that, that cornerstone of the purpose of an NHO is to give back to the local community. And oftentimes, as a lawyer and working with a lot of big businesses with, you know, very um, esteemed charitable wings, you don't really have that same sense that you have with NHOs. That I've actually been part of these programs where I've gone and I've done work um, at, the, at, the, uh, at the fish ponds or... Um, or with my with my clients, giving back to the community as much as we can. So one of the things that makes NHOs so um, special to Franklin uh, Franklin and I and, and and Ricardo in English is because we're dealing with clients that are helping others. So that's that's a phenomenal uh, a phenomenal benefit. Well, thank you. Thanks for giving that support and thanks for your service as well, Shannon. Is this a um... Uh, an outreach effort that comes through the NHOA. So in, if, if someone, a new 8A comes to you or a new um, a Native Hawaiian organization wants to stand up and, and provide some sort of a service, do you, um, is this the, uh, one of the purposes of the association to help put them in contact with folks who can help them stand up legally or stand up business assistance or technical assistance? Is that one of the roles of the organization? Well, I mean, to be honest, you know, the, the primary mission of the organization is to advocate on behalf of NHOs and for the NHO program as a whole. Um, there are often attacks on this program and other socioeconomic okay. programs. And so that's the primary mission of the organization. But, you know, one of the aspects of this business summit is to provide some informal mentorship and networking, which often does lead to that sort of technical advice. And we are planning to have a few sessions that would focus on, on that exactly what you're talking about. But one thing that I wanted to kind of expand on what, what Alex was mentioning is just, you know, also the sense of, of community and how important it is for the NHL community to kind of um, hold this summit, not only for NHOs, but for other small businesses. I think the conference has evolved over the course of the last five years, whereas in the beginning, it may have been focused on the NHOs and the NHL community, but it has evolved to encompass all small businesses that do work for the federal government. And, you know, one of the primary reasons behind that is because the NHOs often team with other small businesses. And so um, the NHOs recognize the importance of ensuring that their teaming partners, you know, are well versed in applicable regulations, um, as well as just general updates, what's going on in the community, one of which is, as Alex will, will talk about, CMMC. So NHOA really views this conference as a way to give back to the larger federal contracting community. It's, it's so important. I mean, that, and that, that sense of community tends to, you see it more in Hawaii, I think to Alex's point, or you tend to see it more in Hawaii. I don't know the other communities of the world, so, or the country that well, you know, I visit them for a conference for a week and sometimes there's, you know, Mission 500, they'll have some, a charity event type thing going on, but there's a, there's a broader sense of, of, of community in Hawaii that definitely permeates the, the government contracting space. I mean, as a small business contractor myself, I think we're all very, um, you know, willing to share and work and understand what our role is to help. And I, I just see that out here a lot, I guess, because I'm here. Um, what, what I'd like to hear from both of you, what are the other challenges maybe that the, the NHOs 
the small businesses face. You know, Alex mentioned that some have already expanded and they're global and they're 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 quite successful. Um, what's the barrier to entry for a newer person that wants to come in and, and maybe learn to leverage the the NHL, the set asides and the things like that that are available? Um, I'll start. I think kind of at, uh, like what Shannon was talking about, some of that, the initial barrier is going to be regarding compliance, right? Making sure that you're okay. in a position, a small business, to um, uh, to not only do the work, because you can obviously do the work, uh, but rather that you are in a position to certify to the government that you're meeting its litany of requirements. So, you know, we're going to be, you know, talking about CMMC and cybersecurity, but even if you're not um, in that supply chain, and even if you're not doing work with uh, covered contracts or uh, even unclassified but sensitive, whatever, um, recognizing that you know if you're doing uh, janitorial work, if you're doing landscaping on Hickam, um, that there are going to be requirements that you have to meet. Uh, that you uh, that there are going to be state laws that might not necessarily apply to you. We have number, of, for example, I'll just give you an, um, in uh, in Washington State, California, and Colorado. We have a lot of federal contractors and their employees have challenges because while it might be legal to smoke marijuana, it's not legal for you as a member of a, of a government contractor, there are gonna be implications for that. So it's really mm. a matter of trying to uh, identify, and this is one of the reasons uh, NHOs do a good job and the NHOA does a good job in working with these small businesses, is to identify, yes, the government can be a very lucrative customer, but it requires and brings with it a host of challenges. Um, that you need to be uh, cognizant of, or you won't be able to keep the money that they're giving. Mm, that's, that's something true. that I see as a barrier. Um, and Shana, yeah, what's the, what's the, the, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, if you look at any government solicitation, there are pages and pages of all of the requirements that a federal contractor must comply with should they be awarded that specific contract. And I think, in, in my experience, many small businesses just kind of gloss over those those applicable regulations and really have no idea what any of it means. And so, you know, that could lead to a whole host of issues down the road should, um, you know, a contractor be found to be non-compliant with any one of those regulations. So. I, I certainly agree with Alex in that compliance often is one of the biggest barriers to entry. Wow, I, I I've definitely been down those roads myself. I I agree. It's a it's a it's a hurdle. Um, I tell you what, we're about halfway through. Let's take a break real quick. We'll go out for one minute. We'll pay some bills, and we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of Crossroads in Learning on ThinkTech Hawaii. On Crossroads in Learning, our guest and I discuss all aspects of education here in Hawaii and throughout the country. You can join us for stimulating conversations to enrich, enliven, and educate. We are streamed live on ThinkTech bi-weekly at 4 p.m. on Mondays. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Aloha. Hey, hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thanks for joining us today on Security Matters. We're with Shannon Eady and Alex Strong. Alex Major, I'm sorry, sir. And we're talking about an upcoming business summit that the NHOA is putting on. Um, we were we were just talking about some of the challenges of, um, you know, getting it, you know, the small business owner looks at all this government requirements and like, oh my gosh, how could I ever deal with that? And I know that in your sessions at the summit, you're gonna be able to have some ops or something like that to help them um, Shannon, are there any particular ones that you key on or that you like you, you like to do every year because it's a sort of an ongoing thing? And then I'd like to hear a little bit about what you guys are planning for the, the show this year. 
Yes, yeah, so we're actually very, you know, very lucky that we have a great relationship with the Small Business Administration. And, um, you know, they have always been able to have representation from headquarters at our business summit, which is always very helpful because they provide a different perspective and they're able to kind of update us on things that are going on behind the scenes, regulatory and, you know, just in general. And so they have been a huge value add for this business summit. And, you know, we're just very lucky that they have, you know, been able to come out. They are very transparent and, and very helpful with respect to individuals that are interested in getting into government contracting, that are interested in, you know, getting into or applying for one of the socioeconomic programs, such as the 8A or hub zone programs. And so, um, you know, hopefully we're, we're going to be having a large representation from SBA. In addition, we will be having a number of breakout sessions. And, you know, this year, one of the big topics is the CMMC, which is going to be applicable to, you know, all DOD contractors. And so um, we thought it would be really helpful for Alex and Franklin to do a specific breakout session on that, because I think, you know, as we've kind of mentioned before, oftentimes contractors are not aware of these things that, that are coming down the pipeline. And so this one is really important and we felt that it would be great for Alex and Franklin to kind of focus their breakout session on this topic. Yeah, and it's really it's really changing. It's sort of fluid, Alex. As we get into this, we'll talk about some of that, how it's in development, right? So everybody's going to have to right. stay updated as we go forward. Um, I noticed on your website, you mentioned that the P-Tax are, are, are also provide assistance and on the NHOA website. And I, I also heard, uh, I think it was Katie Arrington saying that the P-Tax are going to be a resource for small business to uh, uh, get some help with CMMC and maybe, I don't know if it's going to be educational or awareness-based training, but I was wondering, Shannon, is our PTAC active in Hawaii or, or is it, or is it gone? Or, or I know we had one and then do we, you know, I don't know. So Alex maybe has to stay a while. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a, a great, a great question. So our local PTAC actually um, is currently not active. And so where we are seeing a lot of the gap filling is through our local SBDC. And they have actually been providing some of that training in the cybersecurity area. They do provide workshops in specific on specific government contracting topics. And so, you know, we are hopeful that our PTAC will um, become active in the near future. But in the meantime, we do have SBDC and we do have MBDA. Okay. Well, that's good. Because, I mean, if I could just see, in, you know, in Katie's mind, if she's thinking, here, we've got this resource out there. Here we are in Hawaii. Uh, uh, a really actually I, I don't want to make a joke of, we're a really big deal in government in in DOD specifically with the pivot to the Pacific and they'll pay com and so <clears throat> we need a, a lot of support out here and I don't know if 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 she even knows that we don't have an office maybe I was just thinking that kind of came to mind but anyway Alex um <clears throat> I think it's awesome that you guys are, are are bringing expertise out here um and I know you've been doing it sort of on an ongoing basis for a while what's your take on the the development of, of CMMC, of the program itself, and, you know, our odds of really getting it rolled out for across 10 contracts by September, I guess, we'll, 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 we'll theorize a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'll, let me, let me start by saying uh, initially, too, just for, um, just to, I guess, kind of promote the, the NHOA, just real quick. One of the things that I think is really great, and kind of, and Shannon talked about it, the SBA people that come out, for the, for the, for those viewers that are interested or curious, the SBA viewers that come out or uh, presenters that come out provide some incredible insight. And if you, uh, like us, have to deal with the uh, SBA regulations, you realize there are, is a lot of space between their words. And what I mean by that is there is a lot of um, interpretation, a lot of um, feeling and massaging. Um, by getting to know the SBA rep and by hearing what the SBA has to say, you get a really good understanding of how it's going to be applied because it's not very clear in the regulations. So the past few times, uh, the SBA has come out. I'll tell you, that is almost uh, for anybody in the space, any small business, any government contracting attorney, um, it really becomes sort of destination viewing. So I just want to say that 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 program for me has been great. Um, as far as as far as the CMMC goes, you're right. This this has been one of the most fluid events 
in DOD history I have ever seen. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I don't mean that in a good way. Um, but I think they're finally getting to a position uh, that maybe they should have been at initially, um, where they are um, have a rather robust standard that talks about um, all DOD data, regardless if it's CUI or not CUI, um, and finding ways for the defense industrial base to hold data in a manner that maintains its confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, they haven't done that yet. They hadn't done that before. NIST 800-171 uh, as um, oper uh, is made operable through the DFARS uh, 252, 204, 7012 clause didn't do that. Um, they tried to do it, uh, but they really left it in the hands of the contractors and the contractors were left with two competing purposes, right? Maintaining the, the, de uh, the desires of their customers and risk and or uh, cost benefit. So I think what CMMC is going to do um, uh, as, a, as a basis, I think it's a good thing. I think it's a good idea. Uh, but kind of like you said, it's going to be a hard, it's going to be a hard slog uh, over the, over the re uh, remaining uh, months to, to get that, to get it rolling out, uh, not only from the government side and applicable through the government contracts, but also from the contractors trying to be in receipt of it and trying to meet this expectation that candidly is evolving. And it's really hard to hit a moving target. Um, but, you know, I, I, I suspect and hope that where the DOD obviously has a, a dedicated and um, a necessary intent to get this standard rolling, to get the cybersecurity maturation um, model certification standard ready, um, they still have uh, a long way to go um, in terms of having it be fully operational and, and, and functioning in, a, in, in the manner in which they envision it. And I think um, by the end of the year, it'll be interesting to see how it evolves a little bit more and see how, how it's working in, in operation. And then over the next five years, as it's being rolled out, um, we'll probably see some more uh, massaging, tweaking, um, what have you. But it, I, think it's a, I think it's a really good first start. My concern, as always, is the, uh, is the calendar of rollout. Mm. Yeah, I, I was um, talking with some folks about, uh, we haven't heard the word mentioned yet, but, but what about a waiver? Because the government doesn't <laughs> want to lose half of its suppliers because they were unable to be audited. Just as an example, the, the warfighter suffers, the mission suffers. They've got to receive the products and services that their supply chain delivers. So, you know, they, when we roll this standard out, it's, it's gonna have, like, to your point, it came so quickly. If there's, I think there's 10 contracts they want to start this, this, this September. If that's 20,000 supply chain members that need to be audited, that's a lot of companies. That's 20,000 weeks of work, probably minimum. I would say, you know, it's going to be about a week for each one. So, uh, if I had, what well, I don't, can't do the math real quick. If I had what, 400 <laughs> auditors doing it, that's, you know, I could get that all done in 50 weeks or whatever. So, I mean, it's, it's just a whole lot. Of, it's a whole large volume of work. And then there's hundreds of thousands of contractors over five years. So um, I'm sensitive to your point. It's, um, I, 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 it's definitely coming. I think there's no doubt about that. I, I, love, the, I love the raising of the level. I, I think we need to provide a, a, a better, more mature product, more mature services from a cyber hygiene perspective to the federal government. Uh, they seem willing to pay for it, which mm -hmm. was a, that was a, a new thing, right? We didn't hear that before. So it's like, all right, well, if you're willing to pay, I'm definitely willing to do the hard work. I think that's where the SSP sort of failed in that whole self-assessment deal. Um, right. We're at about 25 minutes. So maybe some closing thoughts, um, Alex, you first, and then Shannon, just uh, on the summit and uh, maybe what you hope to achieve this year, what you expect to see out of our, uh, the growth of our NHO uh, groups. I'll, um, yeah, I'll just simply say that, you know, for, uh, for defense contractors, it's, it's very important to pay attention to the CMMC, um, uh, regardless of what you're doing. So you don't have to be a traditional government contractor. If you're doing, like I said earlier, if you're doing things such as uh, janitorial or landscaping on, on bases, um, then you, know, you need to recognize that you're part of the defense industrial base. And as a result, compliance matters, cybersecurity matters, even at, uh, even at those kind of levels. So um, try to find those avenues, uh, come to the NHOA, uh, talk to people, uh, follow us on blogs, follow this, um, uh, this broadcast. Uh, but you need to understand and confirm your compliance. Uh, otherwise, you're putting yourself and your company at significant risk. Yeah, and, and to your point, level one was always there as part of the FAR that everybody sort of ignored. So 
Anyway, Shannon, right. uh, what, are we, what, what are we hoping for the summit this year? And I, I sure hope uh, we pull it off. I know a lot of things have kind of been stalled in the in the, the event world, but um, you know we're all in Hawaii, so hopefully it'll be a it'll be a go. Um, what do you hope to get done out there? Yeah, no, we're just hoping to put on a high quality summit for all of our attendees. We would highly encourage all companies that are either engaged in or interested in getting into federal contracting to please attend. There are a lot of opportunities to network with the government folks, with the NHOs, with other small businesses. Um, and so it's just a really great opportunity to you know, get educational training on specific topics and then to network, which is always very valuable, I think, generally, but particularly here in Hawaii. So again, this summit is not just for the NHOs, but it's really for all businesses that are engaged in or interested in federal contracting. Awesome. So the NHOA Small Business Summit, April 29th to 30th at the Pomaiki Ballrooms. Come on out, learn something, help your small business grow. Shannon, Alex, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really appreciate the insights and I uh, hope to have a great show. I will see you there. Aloha, everybody. Have a great week.